Hello, I am Bridget O'Hanley, and the genetic disorder that I research is oculocutaneous albinism. So there are seven different types of oculocutaneous albinism depending on the type, depending on the gene that the mutation occurs on. So <clears throat> there are seven different genes that can um, be mutated to cause this disorder. In this presentation, I will focus on the most severe type of albinism, which is um, type 1. Along with humans, animals and plants can also experience albinism. So oculocutaneous albinism is the result of decreased or absent melan melanin pigmentation in the skin, hair, and eyes. It varies based on the gene that is mutated. For example, some have very white or pale features while some have more color. Some types of albinism only affect the eyes while other types affect the eyes, skin, and hair. So the types of symptoms or characteristics that one with albinism um, portrays is based on the gene that is um, mutated. And as you can see in the bottom right corner, there's a, a table that shows the different genes that can be mutated associated with the different types of albinism. So this disorder is also characterized by abnormal development of the eyes, which causes vision abnormalities. So oculocutaneous albinism is an autosomal recessive genetic condition, which means the genotype of somebody who is affected by this disorder has two recessive alleles. Since it is autosomal, both males and females can be carriers of the trait or can be affected. In terms of the phenotype, people who are affected with this type of albinism have skin and hair that is much lighter than unaffected people. Sometimes it is even white. They may also have patches of skin with missing color. They often have very blonde, um, blonde hair, very light skin, and sometimes their eyes are red, pinkish, or blue. An interesting thing to point out is that the reason that their eyes are red is due to lack of pigment in the iris. So the red or pink color actually comes from the blood vessels that are showing through the iris. Um, their extremely light skin makes them very sensitive to the sun, so they're susceptible to burning much easier than people who are not affected by albinism. I'll touch on this a little bit later, but a big risk factor of this is that they have a higher risk of developing skin cancer due to their um, skin sensitivity. They also experience vision abnormalities, as I previously mentioned, and um, it differs based on the type of albinism that the person has. So some can use glasses to fix the eye problems, others need surgery. These abnormalities include involuntary side-to-side -side eye movement, being cross-eyed, extreme sensitivity to the light, and less sharp vision, but not completely blind. Their hearing could also be affected as well, or they could develop deafness or hearing problems over time. Um, their vision abnormalities can also improve over time, so um, a lot of them have frequent visits to the eye doctors, and this helps to improve their vision. So albinism is caused by a mutation in the gene that is responsible for producing the proteins that make melanin. Um, so it results in a reduction or absence of melanin in the pigmentation of the skin, hair, and eyes. So specifically for OC OCA1, which is the oculocutaneous albinism type 1, um, it results from a mutation in the tyrosinase gene on chromosome 14, which produces the, en the enzyme tyrosinase which begins the formation of melanin pigmentation. So non-functioning tyrosinase enzyme means that no melanin is formed, which results in the lack of pigmentation in the hair, skin, and eyes. So the mutation is generally a single base substitution mutation in which there is no, there could be either an amino acid substitution, RNA splicing, or a premature stop codon. Um, approximately 5% of the mutations related to albinism are due to deletions or duplications, while the other 95% is due to these single base substitutions. So as previously mentioned, albinism is, is an autosomal recessive condition. So an affected individual must inherit a mutated allele from both of their parents. Therefore, both parents must be a carrier in order for the child to inherit two mutated alleles. So, um, as you can see in the Punnett square in the right, <clears throat> if both parents are carriers, there's a one-fourth chance of the child 
being affected by albinism. And then there is a one half chance that the child is a carrier. And there is also a one fourth chance that the, the child is not affected and is also not a carrier and um, inherits the two dominant alleles, which means that which are the healthy alleles. So in addition, um, consanguinity is when two people who are close relatives have a child. And this makes them more likely to pass on the, the recessive allele for this trait. So um, two relatives who have a child have a higher risk of passing this on um, of their child having albinism. So there are several reasons why this, just, this genetic disorder is significant. First off, um, albinism affects one out of 17,000 people in the world's population. However, this can vary based on different populations such as geographic or um, um, like based on region. In addition, most people with albinism are just as healthy as unaffected people. However, some affected people also may develop other medical complications such as bleeding, um, long bowel or bowel problems, or issues with their immune system. So people with albinism have a higher risk of skin cancer, as I mentioned previously, due to skin sensitivity. It may also be hard for teens to fit in um, due to having a different appearance, and oftentimes they may experience prejudice or bullying, like especially at school. In addition, they may be limited to the activities that they can participate in due to their severe sensitivity to the sun. So a lot of like sports outside, they may not be able to participate just because they really can't be exposed to the sun for that long, um, or they would have to have like extreme protection. So since people with albinism are generally healthy otherwise, there's no real treatment. However, um, affected people should take precautions. So the goal of treatment is not necessarily to eliminate the disorder, but just to like relieve the, the symptoms of it. So some ways in which this can be done is by wearing glasses or contact lenses to improve their vision. Um, they also have frequent visit to the eye doctors, as I mentioned um, previously, and this can help to improve their visual acuity. They often wear sunglasses, sunscreen, clothing, and hats to protect their skin from the sun. Um, recent studies on animals have shown that nitisinone can improve eye abnormalities and fur color in these animals. However, it has not been tested on humans yet. But for the human studies, um, they are currently ongoing to see if lutein and zeaxanthine improve visual abnormalities for people with albinism. So although there are some ongoing studies to try to get a treatment for the disease. Right now, the best thing for affected people to do is just take precaution by um, using some of these techniques. Here are the sources I use to conduct my research. Thank you for listening.